Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to the video. A video that has absolutely nothing to do with fish. Uh, so my apologies. This is a job I got recently, and a job I didn't actually really want to do. Which sounds kind of odd, because all in the walls is uh, welding a bunch of acrylic together. It's not a big deal. Unless you think about the fact that this is for a display case. And if anyone's been in a museum or any other place where they have stuff on display, and they have uh, these sorts of cases, the welding for those cases is practically flawless. You don't see any bubbles, uh, you can actually barely even see the seam. And that level of welding for acrylic, uh, it's beyond what I normally do. And I have managed a number of times, like when I did the large U-shaped pallidarium, uh, to get it practically bubble free. But I do end up, most often, in, especially in something this large, uh, having a few bubbles here and there, and whenever I take on these jobs, I let the individual know that uh, it's not going to be bubble-free, it's not going to be on the level of what you would find uh, in a museum. It's uh, just not worth the effort, because if I were to do that, what would be required is every time I made a small mistake in a bit of a weld and there's a bubble, I would pretty much have to scrap those pieces, uh, cut new ones, and I would go through an awful lot of acrylic. And uh, there's no one's ever going to pay for it. And I have, uh, when I buy my acrylic, the, the place I buy it, they also do some fabrication. And I've asked them uh, what it would cost if uh, they were to do something like this. And uh, the reason why people come to me instead of them is because my prices are a lot more reasonable and like I said I just make sure that they understand that up front and what I do sometimes also of course uh, if they're uncertain is just do a quick weld and show them what it's going to look like and in this case it wasn't necessary uh, they understood and it was just a simple matter of me uh, putting it all together uh, there's one additional thing I'm going to do for this particular job they didn't ask for. Uh, they just wanted a cap to fit over an item so that it didn't get all dusty. Uh, I also told them I was going to make a base for it, which is uh, something they're very happy about. Uh, you get to see that near the end of this. So as you can see, this thing is uh, quite large. Uh, it is, uh, if I remember right now, 27 inches long and 14 inches wide and 17 inches top to bottom. Uh, it is larger than the materials that I normally keep around uh, in the fish room and the shop for uh, making my projects, simply because uh, everything I make is a lot smaller than that. So usually what I do when I get something like this, I have to actually go to um, the place I buy my uh, acrylic and order uh, specific size cuts. In this case, it wasn't really necessary. All I needed to do was to make sure I could encompass the 17 inches. Uh, so I had one strip cut at 17, and then I did the rest of the work here in the shop. So it did end up resulting in uh, not too much in the way of having to buy additional material, which is nice. And I ended up with a little bit of an off cut, which is going to be a little bit bigger, but uh, that's fine too, because uh, I will get projects from time to time that uh, may require that. So that, that again, was no uh, real big deal. As you can see here, this being done out of 1 8th, and 1 8th is extremely flexible, and you have to be very careful when you're doing the welding. That's why I'm showing you this a little bit here. Uh, you have to make sure that you're not um, creating a little bit of a gap, because it will flex, and then uh, when you go to rub your finger along the seam, uh, you'll squeeze out any little extra in the way of uh, methylene chloride, and that will result in a little bit of beading. Uh, which is another uh, thing that you got to try and avoid when putting something like this together because they definitely want the edges to be as flawless as possible. As it turned out, it wasn't that bad. I did get it done uh, reasonably well, uh, definitely uh, more than well enough for this particular job, and uh, I think they'll be happy with it. Well, I'll let you know anyway if they aren't. Uh, I'll have to find something to do with this in the fish room. Uh, because I'm certainly not going to make it again. Uh, it is not worth it. Um, but then again, of course, if they decide that they don't want this, uh, it is uh, easy to take this apart and reuse it. Uh, reuse the materials, I should say. So there you go. That is the top part of the case. This is the part they actually wanted. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to cut some half-inch hardwood ply and some quarter-inch hardwood ply and I'm going to make a little bit of a base for this, just so that uh, it could fit down over it. Uh, 
eighth inch is quite flexible so if you just leave it as is it's a little bit wobbly and I was kind of concerned about that so what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, glue this quarter inch on top of the half inch and because the inside piece here is cut so it just snugly fits the, the inside of the case it'll actually uh, support this a little bit uh, as well so just a simple matter of putting a whole pile of glue on this I'm going to put it in, obviously well, fast forward here just to get this done. So again, this is not uh, the kind of project I like to do. It's not difficult, uh, but it, it's not fish related at all. So like I said, it just takes some projects on because of the world's current situations and uh, it gets me a few extra dollars. There you go. And this is a simple matter of putting some weight on this after I make sure that it is uh, centered in that and then I need also to sand this down, of course. I was thinking about uh, finishing it in uh, a nice oil, but I'm not sure uh, what color they want, uh, if they want it stained or not at this point. So I'm going to leave it as is, and after I talk to them, uh, I figure they'll just probably just take it as is anyway. Uh, sanded down, this wood looks actually quite nice, uh, so it, I don't think it's going to be much of an issue. And they didn't even want it in the first place, so uh, that's fine as well. So there you go. This is now done. I'm going to just pop the uh, case on top of it and give you guys a look at it. And that's the end of this uh, project, really. It was very straightforward and easy to do. It didn't take, uh, let's see, maybe an hour and a half to cut and weld all the acrylic. And then I had to wait overnight for the, the plywood to dry. And the, or sorry, the glue for the two sheets of wood to uh, what, uh, you know, cure. But that's what it. There you go. It is done. <laughs> I don't know. It was just one of those jobs I decided to take. And uh, I figured you guys might want to see it. So that is it. Uh, and you notice in the, uh, the, the spots you see on it there, that is all... Um, uh, dust and whatnot and that all has to be obviously taken off as well best way of doing that by the way is to uh, uh, use an air compressor and just blow air on it because any kind of rubbing that you do on acrylic uh, generates a fair amount of static and then all that material just wants us to stick to it again uh, so yeah I'll have to get the compressor out and um, definitely blow that all off before I deliver it but that's it I know there probably won't be a whole lot of comments about this video because it definitely isn't uh, one that I normally do. This actually would have been up on the other channel. Oh, this is the other thing I need to do. I need to uh, dress all the edges. I'm not going to show that to you either. Uh, it just takes a fair amount of time to get that all so you don't cut yourself and also, of course, so that the edges look uh, nice. So there you go. Uh, it is done. Still a bit of dust on it, but uh, there you go. So if you feel like leaving a comment, please do, and I'll get back to regular videos. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.